Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to this beautiful early Saturday afternoon. It's beautiful outside. It's one of those first weekends where it's actually nice. It's like 55, 60 degrees. But I am, of course, inside like I normally am doing another video here on the election and actually going through all 50 states plus the District of Columbia and giving Trump a chance. What do I think? Is it a hundred percent chance he wins a state? 50%, 25%. Right now it's a snapshot of where we are uh, in mid-March and it looks right now pretty good for Trump, obviously. And this is me actually being very nice to Biden uh, when I give these chances. I think this is pretty accurate based on polling, based on uh, recent approval ratings we've seen from Trump and Biden. Trump is actually three points higher in terms of overall approval rating than Biden. It's crazy considering he was about 40,000 votes from winning the 2020 election. But in terms of approval rating going into the 2020 election, Biden was significantly better. You match it up to where it is now. It really speaks to a potential Trump stomping. And I'm going to just live react to the recent polls and kind of do some surfing through that. Maybe also look at some of the betting markets. But yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing this. I have to go through the first like 13, I think. I have 13 per. So obviously, guys, I don't have to explain this. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kentucky, South Carolina, Kansas, Indiana, Utah, Northern South Dakota, Montana, all those states, you know, there you can't argue it if you're a Democrat winning any of those states. The Utah thing's kind of weird with Mormons, uh, you know, maybe if there's some interesting hybrid candidate like there was back, I think, in 2016. Other than that, there's no way. Trump is winning all those states. Pretty much any Republican running, even if Biden had a very good approval rating and was considered a good president, Trump would still win these states just based off of how conservative they are moving out to... Excuse me, number 14, Idaho, Iowa. Iowa, it is crazy to reflect back on the 2016 election. Obviously, in 2020, no one was saying Iowa was a swing state. But my goodness, in 2016, it was Florida. People thought Florida was leaning left, and it probably was considering what happened in 2008 and 2012 with Obama winning it. But 2016 was like Trump needed literally everything perfect to win that election because Iowa was a swing state. They were saying Texas was a swing state. I never thought that was real, but Iowa certainly back in 2016 was. It's clearly not now. It wasn't in 2020. Wyoming, Nebraska, the one district in Nebraska may go to Biden. I'm not doing the, the districts. I'm not separating it like that when I'm do when it comes to this video. It's just based off of states. So the statewide, obviously, Trump winning middle of America, he's going to win Nebraska for sure. Alaska, Texas, there's another one, you know, maybe back in 2016, but certainly not now. Trump's going to win that state by about, I would say, five to seven points. People keep talking about population shift. Yeah, not really. It's not impacting to the level to where Texas actually could be a swing state. Maybe the earliest would be 2032, possibly. West Virginia, Missouri, Tennessee, all obvious. And then you get into the real, kind of the swing states, I guess. Both Ohio and Florida, major shifts at this point in mid-March. Ohio, 99% chance it's going to Trump outside of something crazy happening. It's pretty crazy to say that considering... Obama won the state in 08 and 2012 very easily. Trump takes it in 2016 by eight points. He takes it in 2020 by eight points. And now he's up by 10, nine points in all the polls. They'll probably take Ohio by double digits or around there. And then the big swing this year, as opposed to 2020, is the state of Florida. With all of its electoral votes, this completely changes the math. And with Florida, it's not just that the DeSantis factor, it's the amount of registered conservatives there are now in that state. Going into 2012, when it was Obama versus Romney, I think the Democrats had like a 300,000, you know, advantage in terms of registered Democrats versus registered Republicans. Right now, I think it's plus 500K for the right. So it's completely changed. DeSantis is a huge reason why. I know a lot of Trump people don't like DeSantis right now, but he single-handedly swung that state. I mean, he won in 2022 by 20 points. I know he was an incumbent, but to a Republican to win, win a swing state by 20 points is just ridiculous. So Florida, I would be shocked at this point, which is pretty crazy to say, but I would be shocked if it went Democrat. That's why I've got it at 95% chance. North Carolina, I have an 80% chance. People will fight me on that. There are a lot of liberals that are trying to be optimistic about North Carolina because of the close margins in 2016 and 2020 where Trump only won it by a point and a half. But you need to understand 
going into 2020, Biden was a lot more liked. Trump was a lot more disliked. Think about how that's turned and Trump still won the state of North Carolina. And now you've got Trump actually more liked amongst independents, amongst the general population. I could see Trump winning North Carolina. It's still going to be a relatively close state, but he could possibly extend and win it by three or four points, not just one and a half point based on how bad Biden's approval rating is state nationwide and really in North Carolina. Arizona and Nevada out west, I view them very similarly. You could actually argue Nevada should be a little bit more pro-Trump than Arizona just based on the polls, but I think with the polls, you can't really dice it that narrowly. They're both at around 70% chance. They've The polls have been amazing for Trump in both of those states. I mean, they're plus like six or seven. It'd be one thing if it was like plus three for Trump, plus four, but right now I think Arizona and Nevada are, are clear Trump leans. You can still classify them as swing states because... We're a ways away from the election, six, seven months, I get it. But right now, if you're asking me to give a percent chance based off of all the polls, all the data I've been given, it would be about a 70% chance. And that's being very nice to Biden. I could go 75, 80 based off the polls where Trump's up by about seven points on average. Moving on to the next set of states, uh, Georgia, I've got it around 70% chance. You know, we know what happened in 2020. I did think Trump was going to win Georgia in 2020. They needed every last mail-in ballot, but they did win in 2020. Biden won. I would be very surprised if Biden won again. It, things have shifted. The polls in Georgia are even more in favor of Trump than Arizona and Nevada, or it's similar. That's why I've got it around 70% chance. I think Georgia is a Republican state in general. The Rust Belts, you know, you could argue definitely that all the three Rust Belt states should be 50-50. The reason I have Michigan and Wisconsin at around 60% chance is because the margins, and Pennsylvania, the margin was very close, but it just seems like if you look at the polling in Michigan and Wisconsin, Trump is up by around three to five points. Pennsylvania, it's a dead heat. I think all of them are even, but if I'm also accounting for the fact that Biden has the lowest approval rating in modern American history, I have to utilize that and say, you know what, it's very hard to make Biden the favorite. Again, you could argue Michigan and Wisconsin should both be 50%. Pennsylvania's 50% chance. I've got Maine. The way they do their state is weird. I've got it also at 50% chance. New Hampshire, you could argue, is 50% chance for Trump as well. But I just think New Hampshire is more of a liberal state. And then the two states that if Biden continues to trend this bad, maybe Trump can swing the number one state would be Minnesota, where Biden, we've seen early polls, he's up by three or four points. Obviously, that's close. That doesn't mean that Trump is going to win it. Certainly, Minnesota is a more liberal state. That's going to be harder to get than a state like New Hampshire or Maine. But you could see something opening up there with how unlikable Biden is. Virginia, around 20% chance. The Glenn Youngkin factor, it's possible. Virginia is more of a liberal state at this point. I don't think it's going to happen. But I've got it at around 20%. And then Colorado... Uh, sitting at 5%, you know, I think Biden was up by maybe 9 or 10 points in a poll. It, it's very unlikely. They, they've got too many big cities with the high population centers, Boulder, Denver. It's good. It would be hard for any Republican to win it. I think Trump could keep it within 8 points maybe. He's very like unlikely to win it. And then there's a bunch, obviously, with zero, similar to the first, you know, 100% chance. These are just the Democratic strongholds. New York, he's not winning. I know there was a poll that only had him down by 9 Oregon, Washington, California, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Hawaii, New Mexico, Illinois, along with Massachusetts, and of course, the 51st state or whatever, you know, the District of Columbia, all definitely 0% chance of winning for Donald Trump, for sure. And while I'm here, I might as well take a look at some of the betting odds, zoom this in a little bit. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely something to look at. It's the just uh, overall president odds, probably the best thing to look at for this. You can see Trump right now around a 46% chance, really almost at an all-time high. Biden with this massive uptick, really not because of Trump, more so it involves Michelle Obama and Gavin Newsom going down significantly. Basically, they're admitting that no, Biden is going to be the nominee. The betting market is saying it will be Biden against Trump. That's why Biden's got that uptick. You saw Obama and Newsom around 7 8% a few weeks ago. They both come way down. If you're interested, RFK, where is he at? 3% right now. 
Michelle's at 5.8, Newsom's at 4.8. I don't think, I think it's kind of impossible for Newsom to be the nominee. They've ruined it for themselves by having Kamala as the vice president. You really can't put Newsom above Kamala. This is the Democratic Party and their optics, not what I would say, but I'm saying they would not do that have Newsom jump someone like Kamala who's been in the VP position for three years. And you certainly can't have Kamala become the president because that would be even worse than Biden. It, it's so rare to have a vice president with a worst approval rating or a similar approval rating to the president. Normally the vice president is more liked because nobody really cares about them. But Kamala is like right on par or even worse than Biden. So their best strategy right now would really be to, to deploy Michelle Obama However, I guess she doesn't want to do it. I don't know. Um, And it possibly will be Trump, who right now is around 46% chance taking on Biden. Trump with around a 12% lead over Biden. As we get closer and closer to the election, I would imagine both Biden and Trump, their percent chances are going to go up because it's going to be more and more obvious they are the two uh, people that are running. And that is just an update overall on that. And then looks like we do have a Florida poll here. And yeah, I mean, it's just hard to see. There was an interesting one here that had it tied, but overall, Trump actually won Florida by three and a half points in 2020, barely won it in 2016. This is what we're talking about. It's hard to consider this a swing state. I saw a recent, uh, this wasn't recent, maybe a year ago, a Vox YouTube video. It said how Republicans got Florida. They've basically given it up. I'm sure Biden will do campaigns down there. But uh, this is a huge seismic shift that really changes the math because in 2016 and 2020, it was always Republicans threading the perfect needle. Now it's a lot more even to where, yes, there's paths for Biden, but there's also paths for Trump. And it's like we're talking 50-50 as opposed to 2016 was another world with the amount of you know states that seemingly were swing states or Democratic leans. Trump had to literally go perfect and he did. 2020, it was kind of similar But now with both Ohio and Florida being pure conservative states, I guess you could argue Georgia possibly going to the left, although I think it'll go to the right in 2024. The math has shifted now, and and it's a lot more favorable for conservatives, and it's a lot more even. It's not like, oh, now Republicans, you know, in terms of the Electoral College math, they're for sure going to win. That's not what I'm saying. But in 2016 and 2020, there was a distinct favorite based on lean states in the Electoral College. The Democrats were the clear favorite. That is not the case anymore with Florida and Ohio swinging to the right. So that is just an update on the polls and on the election and what I think Trump can possibly win in terms of states and the percent chances. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.